guys, so today I'm going to be showing you this pretty awesome looking trick, but before I do that, you'll probably notice that I'm in a completely different room than I normally am. And this is actually because I moved recently, so this may or may not be the brand new, you know, performance filming studio space, um, but I'm still figuring it out. So for now, this is going to be where I film my performances and stuff. So yeah, without further ado, let's get right into this awesome trick. So uh, before we start, I'm actually going to need to pull out just a few cards, and they're just going to be the two red kings. And as I'm pulling them out, you guys can see that the rest of the deck here is completely shuffled and normal cards and everything like that. Perfect. So I'm just going to show you guys the two red kings here. We have the king of hearts and the king of diamonds, both of which we are actually going to be placing off to the side for now. We're going to get back to them in just a little bit. Um, but for now, we're going to shuffle the deck just like this. And actually, if the spectator wants to, they can go ahead and riffle shuffle the deck as much as they want, just like this. And I'm going to show them that really the cards are getting shuffled, like it's not a fake shuffle or anything. They can push the cards together just so that they can get that nice visual that the cards really are getting mixed up. So normally the Magician would have the Spectator select the card face down, but I'm actually going to be turning the cards over um, because I want the Spectator to select a card face up, just because it makes more sense with the rest of the trick, and I'll show you, show you guys why in just a minute here. So I'm just going to spread through the cards, they can go ahead and just name any card that they see here that they like. Let's say they do the Nine of Hearts, for example. And I say, really interesting. Is there any reason why you selected the Nine of Hearts? And they just say, not really. It's just sort of a random choice. And I say, okay, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. It can be a completely random choice. So now we're going to be taking the two red kings here that we left off to the side, and we're going to be placing one towards the top, one towards the bottom. Now, I'm sure you wouldn't be too impressed if I told you that right now, your card is in between the two red kings. Well, yeah, that's not very impressive because almost the entire deck is in between the two red kings, but don't worry, I'm, I'm going to take care of this right now. All we have to do is push them in and give a little shake. Just like that. You guys can see two cards, they leave the sides of the deck and they come together in the middle to sandwich one card, the nine of hearts. And that was your card, right? It was, and here's the rest of the deck, and yeah. So that's the trick, guys, and now for the tutorial. All right, guys, so here's the tutorial for the trick that you just saw. So a lot of people have been asking me for some more advanced card tricks. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. So it's actually a completely impromptu card trick. So the cards can be completely shuffled by the spectator beforehand, and you can do this like in the middle of your routine, or it can be an opener or a closer. It doesn't matter. You guys can do whatever you want with this. So to start off, you're going to turn the cards face up, and you're just going to be finding the two red kings. So you're just going to pull out the two red kings. You guys do not have to use the two red kings, obviously. You guys can use whatever two pair of cards that you want. But when you pull out the kings, um, you're going to also explain that the rest of the deck is completely shuffled. And as you do that, you're going to spread the deck out a second time. And then when you square up the cards, you've actually obtained a break now. Um, underneath the top four cards. So the two red kings and these two random cards that were on top as well. So all I do is when I pull out the kings, I just do this, I spread through the cards, and then I catch a break underneath these two cards when I close the spread, just like this. So now I have a break uh, right underneath these top four cards. So now what I do is I actually lift up those cards slightly, and I place my thumb underneath, and I just turn the deck over, and then I turn my wrist over to flash the back of these kings. It'll make the spectator think that there's like no extra cards there, when in reality you actually are showing the extra back of the card. At this point, when the deck is flipped over, you're just going to place the cards back on top and still maintain that break, and just put them on top face up. You're going to peel off the top king here, just show it normally, and then you're just going to lift up with your three fingers here to grab these three extra cards here, because this actually is not just the king. It's the king and two in different cards, so you're just going to go one, and then just lift up those three cards as one and just keep them nice and square. And then you're gonna take all the cards and turn them over just like this. And then you're gonna take the top two cards and say, we're gonna take the Red Kings and set them aside for now. We'll get back to them in just a little bit. And these two cards are actually not the Red Kings. These are the two completely random cards that you got a break from in the beginning. The two Red Kings are actually here on the top of the deck. So at this point, you're gonna be just riffle shuffling the deck just like this and just maintain those two cards on top, just like this. You're gonna do what's called a Browie reversal with the top two cards. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys know what this is. It's basically just a double undercut, but instead of just cutting the cards, you're actually flipping the cards over on top. So all I do is I dribble the cards and I actually obtain a break by dribbling the cards, and then I just let two cards uh, stay in my hand, and that's how I get my break. So I just dribble the cards and I just hold back two cards 
and then I can place my pinky back. Now, obviously that's a pretty advanced move. So if you can't do that, you guys can obviously riffle up from the back and stuff if you guys feel that's easier. And now I'm ready to do a brow reversal. So I catch my thumb break and I take about half the cards, turn them over on top, and then I take the remainder of the cards, turn them over on top. And now I actually have the entire deck face up, but on the bottom of the deck are the two red kings facing the opposite direction. That's all you wanna do. So now you're gonna say that you want the spectator to go ahead and select a card face up, but before you do anything, you're actually going to obtain a pinky break on the bottom card, which is actually gonna be one of the red kings. And you're just gonna hold this pinky break as you spread out the cards. So you're gonna spread the cards out here um, and just keep a nice tight grip on the deck because if you don't, uh, you could potentially you know, flash that bottom card being the opposite direction. So just make sure you have a nice tight mechanics grip so that when you spread out the cards, you won't flash that card. The spectator can go ahead and select any card. Let's say they do the Jack of Hearts, for example. So they're gonna select the Jack of Hearts. Now you're just gonna use some misdirection because you're actually gonna need to cull this card. So you're gonna take the card and you're gonna put it into a cull position. So take the card on top, put it directly on top, and then take your fingers and you're gonna cull that card underneath, just like this. And then when you cull that card, usually you would just put it on the bottom. But when you spread through the cards, you're actually gonna open up this pinky break even more because you have that pinky break, right? You're gonna take the Jack of Hearts and you're actually going to insert it right inside of that pinky break, just like this. And then you can let go of the pinky break and then you can just square up everything. And the spectator will not be able to see any of this because you're actually gonna just continue spreading and you're gonna use misdirection and just ask them, is there any reason why you chose that card, blah, 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 you know, stuff like that. When you place that card in the pinky break, you'll actually notice that there, now that card is actually right there in between the two red kings already. So the trick is almost over. So once the spectator has selected the card, you're just gonna give the deck a quick swing cut. So just break off about half the cards with your index finger, swing them over, and slap the rest on top. And what that does is it sandwiches uh, the kings and their selection in the middle of the deck. And now you're ready for the last part of the trick, which is taking the two uh, red kings, but these are actually the random cards. You're gonna place one towards the top, one towards the bottom. So just make sure you put like, you know, at least five or six cards on top. So you're gonna leave them there in the middle of the deck. And this is what I do at this point. So I say, this little patter I say, so you wouldn't be impressed if I told you that your card is currently in between the two red kings. Obviously that's not very impressive because almost the entire deck is in between the two red kings. So what I do there is I actually do a block push spread. I um, mean, this is because if I did just a normal spread, I would completely expose those two face down cards and their selection in the middle of the deck. So what I do is as I'm reaching the middle of the deck, I just block push over a bunch of cards and that will completely conceal the selection and the two actual red kings. So that's all I do there. I just do one little block push spread and that will just give a really, really nice convincer that these are the only two face down cards in the middle of the deck. So at this point, I'm gonna do what's called the side angle jog concealment. You guys should probably know what this is by now, but basically what it is, is you're gonna place the cards in at an angle like this, and then you're gonna place them with your index finger and hold the cards like this. Your ring finger here is actually gonna contact the corners right here, these two corners of those face down cards. Your middle finger and ring finger, I, I meant that, sorry. Both of those fingers, they're just gonna pull the cards out here just like this, and then they're actually gonna go into the side of the deck, just like so. You're gonna do that as you shake the cards like this. And then when you spread the cards out from left to right, those cards will be hidden underneath the rest of the deck. So when you just spread out the cards normally, just do it nice and fast, and don't do it in an arc, just do it in a straight line, just like this. So you're gonna go like that, and just like that, those two cards will be completely hidden because they're actually underneath all these cards. So if I was gonna spread them out, you guys would see them, but right now they're just hidden and that's perfect because all you need to see are these two cards in the middle of the deck sandwiching their selection. And then the most amazing part is when you flip those two cards over, that's really like the magician fooler part because that's just really cool that these are actually the same kings that you were using in the beginning. And like if you want, these two kings can be signed by the spectator and even the selection can be signed as well. But yeah, if I was gonna show you guys the rest of the deck here, uh, the, one, the one downside of this trick is that the deck is not very examinable after because you will have those uh, two face down cards in the middle. But one idea that I came up with that I wouldn't really do in real life, but one idea that I came up with is these are two obviously in different cards, but what if at the beginning of the trick, instead of just using in different cards to switch out for the kings, what if you used the black kings just like this? So if you actually use the black kings, you know, in the beginning of the trick when you're doing this pinky break thing, you catch a break underneath the four cards. What if you were doing the four kings? And then when you switch out the cards like this, or sorry, when you switch out the cards like this, 
and then switch the cards out. Um, those are now the Black Kings. So now when you do the entire trick again, basically, when you have the card selected, and then you cull it, and then you place it in the pinky break like this, and then you cut the deck, and then you do the whole side angle jog concealment thing just like this, um, and then their card is there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to move as fast as I can. What you can do at this point is you can say, well, the kings are pretty good at finding stuff. They're not only good at finding your card. See, if we square up the deck here and we wave the kings over it again, uh, what if they can find the other two black kings? And as you can see, two more cards now have gone face down in the deck, the two black kings. Um, and that would be a really cool like kicker ending. So obviously that's up to you. You guys can do that if you want. It's completely optional. I personally would not do that as a kicker ending because I just think that the sandwich trick is strong by itself. But yeah, it's up to you guys. So anyways, guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed this trick. And yeah, so see you guys for my next video. Bye.